You want to have a little sighting? Yeah? You want to say hi? Yeah? You want to say hello? Yeah? I get a kiss? Thank you. All right. And now back to the show. We can talk about all these things. I, 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 don't even think about it. Stop. Hold on. He's tearing stuff up. Let me get this music down to some tolerable level. Hey, dude, get off of there. He's eating soap. Hold on. Hey, dude, get down. Get down. He really, he really loves soap. I mean, I guess that's a good thing that he loves soap, but he loves soap. All right. This one is cheesecake slice coffee. Mm, it doesn't it doesn't really smell or taste like either of those things. And don't worry, I don't have any Picassos. <laughs> I don't really have any uh, like art like that. Uh, heck, half of my art is NFT art. I wonder if you can see it. Hold on. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you. See on the oh, let's see if I can do it. See the one on the far left and the far right. That's in it. Those are both NFTs. One of them is the Node Market NFT, and the other one is one I did, uh, which was like a kind of it's these three children looking. It's Norman Rockwell style. These three kids looking at a computer in 1930. Kind yeah, of cool. Anyway, yeah, I like if I'm if I get some cool art, I just make it, and I just uh, you can use a, a there's an app called Can Canvas Pop or Canva Pop, something like that. You can just print whatever. It's pretty badass. Anyway. Okay. Um, behind the wall. Uh, th we're not going to do th – this is going to be mostly discussion. And in addition to the discussion, let me pull up – let me pull up my GPT. Um, I was asking questions of chat GPT earlier. I had some thoughts about this, but we want – we need to talk about this. Because there are, there are good things that can come about 
and then there are bad things that can come about. Um, so I think we just need to have a full discussion about this. And I think that there's a lot of things that I don't like about this. And there's a few things that I do like about this. And we have to be even keeled. So full disclosure. Um, and I'd love to know in the chat, um, what are your percentages of ownership? Not the number of tokens, but the percentages of ownership you own of those three assets. Does that make sense? Um, so <clears throat> those three assets are uh, AGIX, Ocean, Fetch. Now, as investors, as investors, everybody should be happy so far. Right? There's nothing to be unhappy about as a pure investor. Um, uh, let's see. Coinbase has blocked your buying privileges. Oh, um, so, Rusi, that's very likely um, something to do with either you transacted with a weird wallet or your um, mechanism for sending them currency units like the uh, from your bank. Something's misaligned. So what you do is go to do a support request and ask them. You need to kind of do it very clearly like you're talking to chat GPT. Hey, I would love to reinstate my Coinbase account so that I can make purchases what are the steps that I need to take and, and literally follow the steps. They will, they will help you fix it just with, you can fix this through emails. They will listen. You just have to have a lot of dexterity and not get frustrated, which I don't always have. Um, but you can fix it. We fixed it for one of our clients, uh, last week. Mew, 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 mew. What are you doing? Got some soap on you. Got some soap on you. Yeah. He also likes to play in the water, so he gets in the sink and starts slamming around. Then he likes to grab the drains. Oh, you got me. Oh, he likes to grab the drains and run off with them, like the rubber, the rubber inserts. He grabs them and runs. He loves them. Those are great fun. All right. Uh, 50%. What do you, uh, Greg, what do you mean 50%? You can't be... There's three assets. Let me know if you have the three assets. So kind of what I want to see is this. 24, 12, 4. Okay. Uh, 20, hey, stop. Uh, let's see. Uh, 23, 22, 6.4. I'll tell you what I'm at. Full Because let's do some full disclosure. Let's do some full on disclosure. Oh, by the way, someone griped at me yesterday. Uh, this this you'll all appreciate. Someone griped at me because they said that uh, I told them to sell Cogito. No, I said I'm selling Cogito because I don't like the company and I don't like the people involved. Um, hey, dude. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, he's right here. Wow. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Can you hear him growl? Hey. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. He's so fluffy. You just got to love him, even though he tears everything up. Whoa, 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 whoa. There you go, buddy. Um, so my percentages are, as of this moment, up, 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 give me two seconds. Okay, I have uh, Fetch is in my portfolio 11.8%. Again, it's 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 over. I'm not going to say any numbers. I'm just going to say the percentages. Fetch, I have at 11.8% of my total portfolio because, again, the last few uh, months have been AI. Uh, AGIX, I have at 10.4%, so pretty close. Uh, so I'm going to get watered down considerably once this merger occurs. Uh, and then Ocean, I have 2.1%. And again, that's because those other assets um, pulled a runner uh, pretty hardcore over the last several months, as you know. Okay, so there's my disclosure. That way everybody's, no one thinks I'm pulling a shenanigan. So I actually have more fetch. So... 
that's where I'm at. Okay. Uh, fetch 60. Anything. Um, fetch 35. Is this, guys, uh, these uh, these numbers, are these your total portfolio numbers or just of those three assets? Is that like, like I guess what I'm saying is, is uh, stop calling, stop, stop it. Uh, is, for instance, Helder, is your portfolio 60% fetch? Because you can't be 60, 30, 30, because that's 120%. I feel like that's too many percent. So, so fellas, we only have 100%. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so those are your only three assets, or are you just saying comparatively amongst each other? The reason I'm asking you this is I want everybody to be in a frame of mind that is, for instance, even if you're emotionally invested in this, don't be emotionally invested more than your actual investment, <laughs> right? Like don't be disproportionately emotional. When I make arguments, like I go in the chats, I get yelled at, but by the way, just so everyone knows, uh, more than, more than two individuals from the singularity net team reached out to me telling me to be quiet. So I'm not going to say who it was, doesn't matter who it was. But more than two people, many more than two people, so you can do some math there, uh, four, four people uh, reached out to me and said, can you just be quiet about this and let it happen? And that's what actually made me think, oh, then there is some smoke here. Because if there was no smoke here, then uh, normal public discourse would be entertained. Uh, so again, that's the backdrop. So that's why I decided, you know, today we can talk about a couple of things. One, this resolves to some kind of passive indexation, some kind of indexation effect. So we want to talk about that. We want to frame this correctly if we're trying to figure out, and let's also not confuse what is the price of something and what is the value of something, right? So really quick, uh, we always say the price is always right. What do we mean by that? If you guys could just say that in, in 10 words or less, what do you mean by, what, what do I mean? You can mean whatever you want. What do you, what do you think I mean by when I say the value we can argue, but the price is always right? Hey, no. Hold on. No. No. Get off. <laughs> he also eats plants. He also eats plants. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry without me. Well, we were waiting for you, Howard, buddy, but then this, you know, the show must go on, right? Um, okay. So there's, a, there's a certain kind of indexation effect that has, that has kicked in. And yes, so the price is always right because if two people agree at 3 a.m. on a price and that price happens, someone transfers a seller transfers to a buyer in return for anything a service an asset whatever whatever money whatever money is used to transfer remember money can be currency but doesn't have to be money is anything that extinguishes debt between two or more entities anything could be a service could be a high five Woo! could be anything could be some glad handing you know whatever so Anytime two people, two or more entities agree on a price, that's the price. Price is always right. The price is always correct because that's the price that happened. The value that gets into a more philosophical, sometimes emotional argument. People place different, people rate different qualities and create a value estimation of an asset differently. We all value things differently. I try to use the five T's, right? Which are the team, the timing, the tokenomics, the technology. Why does the token exist? Things like this. If you do the five T's, it at least gives you a starting point to derive some kind of value. And again, everybody's got a different way of doing this, but you've got to start somewhere. So I believe this is where you start. Some kind of value estimation. And I kind of ascribe five points to each of these. And that's where I start. Then I look and I say, okay, of these assets, after having achieved the five T's, can these assets achieve use, utility, and wide-scale adoption? 
So to me, if we do some basic five teeing, five teeing, and you guys can napkin math this. You guys can do this. You didn't take a, a rocket scientist, which I'm certainly not. Do a quick five T's. And if you're like, well, I can't find all the information, a great place to start, go to Coin Market Cap. There's tons of sorry, there's tons of stuff at Coin Market Cap that will help you get a basic five T's. There's no exact number. Any, any I might do the five T's on a company two months in two months. It could be completely different. Just just based on where I'm at as an investor. So each of you are going to get a different idea of what this is each. So I, I go five points for the team total, five points timing, five points technology, five points tokenomics, and then why does the token exist? Okay. Um, we can start throwing out some, as we look at this discussion of the ASI token, and really quick, does everybody understand basically what's going to happen? Uh, and yeah, Steve... Uh, ADA would not be a part of this because, first of all, Ocean Protocol, data marketplace. AGIX was going to be a, an AI marketplace. There's not really a product. So, whatever. Fetch. We don't really know what it's going to be, but it's not fully developed. But they have a lot of cool ideas and they got some cool tech. They, they have some, some, some motive. That, no product. So AGIX, no product. Let's be honest. Fetch, no product. A lot of drive, a lot of determination, but no real product. Ocean Protocol, a product. Yeah, kind, of, kind of lightly used, but I think a quality asset. Like, I really like Ocean. Um, okay, so uh, ADA is a layer one protocol. And um, it would not be a part of this merge because it's not you're you're talking about like imagine a small hamburger stand on the corner of sunset boulevard versus mcdonald's all right cardano is mcdonald's i mean that's probably bad charles hoskinson would probably cough his lunch up if you heard this but that's mcdonald's it's it's a giant giant network it is a massive i mean cardano is massive it has a lot of community buy-in. They have incredibly good governance. This is in no way comparable to that. And my guess is if you woke up Charles at 3 a.m. and explained this to him, he would laugh, he would snicker, and he would go back to sleep. Because this is not that. And also, this isn't a company merger. These, these assets are merging the asset only, the tokens. They're just merging the tokens. Does that make sense? The AGIX token, the Ocean token, the Fetch token are going to merge. Fetch is rebranding to ASI on the Cosmos network because Fetch, well, none of these are layer ones also. I mean, you could kind of make a weird argument that they're creating a kind of a kind of data markety layer one asset-y kind of existence for Ocean protocol. But, but if we're really honest, like really honest, None of these are layer ones. None of these are protocols. Singularity Net certainly isn't. It's a token. It's a token. Cool company, but it's a token. So let's be honest. Fetch. It's not a protocol. It runs on Cosmos. So it's a token, right? You, you could launch a token on Cosmos in, in 54 seconds. Um, Ocean currently is a token. Now, um, That's that's different than like a protocol. So there's there's kind of the the argument for that. I, I know we beat that horse dead, but I just want to make sure that that's clear as we move forward. Okay, so you do your five T's, you look at the team, and let's just do a quick team. Uh, and you guys rate. We're gonna do this together. It's gonna be fun. Um, what do you guys think the team at Singularity Net deserves? One through five. So I want you to go. You're gonna write the three assets: AGIX fetch and ocean and you're going to rate the teams um i do consider stablecoin as part of my portfolio because stablecoin that i would redeploy is uh it's it's cash at the ready so to speak so yes um okay so what do we think the 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 teams are i if i'm going off if i'm and remember 
the team is not one individual. The team is the team. The entire team. The entire team. Everybody. <laughs> uh, I think I'm with... I, uh, I think it's me... I think I'm probably three, three, four, three, three, four. I think for me, three, three, four. Um, I think AGIX is a three because remember the whole team, not Ben. Ben is one among many. Ben is amazing. Ben is a seventeen. The the entire team to me is a three. Um, which is not it's average. Three is average. It's right there in the good solid middle. It's upper 60% with a bell curve. You pass. Someone's still going to call you doctor. Um, fetch, probably a three or... I like some of the things Fetch does on the marketing side a lot. I like some of the partnerships Fetch digs up a lot. And again, we're just talking about the team. So the team. So I'm going to say I'm going to say a three... I would say almost a four with Fetch, almost, except that there seems to be a little bit of dubious behavior among their upper executives as far as like partying and, and maybe, um, let's just say indulgence. And sometimes when you see that in your upper leadership, that should be like a red flag. Um, and how do you figure out? You just go with your gut instinct, Donna, uh, having read about them using Coin Market Cap to go and research about the team. So, um, let's think about the timing. Um, I think the timing of all these projects is a five. All of them is a five because we are in the AI, we are in the AI revolution. I don't even think anybody could argue that the timing is not a five, right? Is there, is there any real argument the timing's not a five? So I think we're five on, so team, I've got me, I'm like a three, three, four timing. I've got fives across the board. Technology. Well, this is where it gets sticky. Um, the team at Singularity Net is doing a lot of incredible stuff. So technology, technology. I'm going to give them. I would give them a five, but I'm going to give them a four. And I'll tell you why a four, because they don't have a product. But they have a lot of almost product. And they have the best mind in, you know, as far as. The theoretical mind, it's been. The coding mind, I think, is uh, two feet is the top of the game. Um, but 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 from a pure theory perspective, theory standpoint, and just kind of the OG, you got you got Ben. So uh, so so from the technology perspective, uh, I think they're a four, even though they don't have a product from technology. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm on the edge of saying yes. Uh, so okay, from the from the uh, the fetch perspective, technology, um, it's all show and, and no go. So they're going to be, fetch is going to be a two for me on that, on that one thing, because fetch talks a lot and they got a lot of great partnerships. That doesn't mean anything if you don't have a product. And I don't know, without this run that sure looks coincidental, uh, <laughs> Just in the nick of time, um, I don't think Fetch, I don't know if Fetch would have made it without some fortuitous price action. Let's just say that. Without, without some fortuitous price action, I don't know if Fetch exists right now. Uh, I think if we had all of the facts and we went backwards in time, which we'll never get and we can't do, um, if all of that was exposed... I think you have a situation that doesn't look good for Fetch. Um, a, an illiquidity situation and maybe an insolvency situation. But you know what? Time, time heals all wounds because the price of the asset went up. So let's talk about tokenomics. Um, on this one, you kind of, you just kind of, for this discussion, um, I don't know without getting into the super super math of it i don't know if we can do a a tokenomics discussion you can just kind of look at the the general distribution of the assets 
if you look at the, for anybody here that wants to just go have some fun and, and vomit up your lunch, but not this delicious Costco coffee, um, go look at the wallet holders. Go look at the top wallet holders for Fetch. Go look at the top wallet holders for AGIX. And then just real quick, tell me if you think you're going to get a fair vote on anything. I think the top 20 wallets can push through any vote they want. So, so the tokenomics for me are, are a two for AGIX, a two for Fetch. And I'm going to give Ocean a four or e, I'm going to give it a three or a four because Ocean of these three looks like the most quality actual company. Now, I'm not talking about the individuals. I'm just saying the actual quality of the company, the quality of the proposition, the quality of the product. Ocean has a product, an actual product. Singularity Net does not. A lot of good intentions, that's great. Graveyards are paved by the headstones of those with good intentions. Fetch. Great intentions, maybe, but no product. So they are at least right now, Mm, AI meme coins. However, we know that meme has value. Memes are are culturally significant. These these kind of these kind of uh, what's it like a stamp like a like a notarized stamp of the state of group think at any one moment is expressed in memes and gifs. Not gifts, but gifts, gifs, right? Like you can you can have a whole conversation through funny through funny gifts and JPEGs. So there is a value to meme meminess in memes. So I'm not just discounting that. Look at look at how much money is locked up in all those stupid ass meme coins. So there is a social value in that. So even if AGIX and Fetch are just meme coins that are memes representing people's interest in a decentralized AGI future, there's still value in that. Well, to somebody, right? There's still value to somebody. Okay. So, um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah, maybe, maybe they just had a moving sale. Um, okay, so when you go across the board and then you say, okay, finally the token, why does the token exist? Um, well, the AGIX token was going to be used in the marketplace. So fair. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. There's a, there's a, there's a use for that. That's, um, I'm going to give it a four or a five. I have no problem with that. The Y token. Um, now Helder, what I would say is if you go down the list of the other S net assets, the spinoff assets, meaning Rejuve, Cogito, Nunet. Like, you know, to walk down the list. Uh, Sophia verse, I'm not sure yet. They haven't really launched, so it's kind of not fair to kind of include them in this. But I mean, most of the other singularity net spinoff assets should never have happened. They should just have used the AGIX token. So on those, it would be like ones or zeros. Um, but AGIX itself, yes, there's a value there for the token, the Y token. Uh, fetch, why token? Yep, it makes sense. They're they're going to do all these things. They need a token in the, in, in a similar way to Singularity Net. Um, makes sense, right? The fetch token makes sense. I'm okay with that. Four, four or five. Yep. Um. So, but if you add that up, if you add your own personal numbers up, and I urge you to do so, give me, tell me what your total is on those numbers, on all those five numbers, having scored them from one to five. To check Sophia wallet, Synthene wallet. Uh, I would assume that's fake. Please don't do not click through. Don't don't click through wallets at all. It's the the, the wallet that they have is the Sentience wallet, but it's kind of a dumpster fire. Don't don't go through links. If you ever set up a wallet, you just log into your wallet using the old processes. Do not ever click a link and go to. Don't merge Web two and Web three. I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, what changed your mind on Nunet? Um, I, I know. I, I thought. I just thought at some point they're going to launch a goddamn product. 
Um, but this is not a new net discussion. Um, I think Singularity DAO is a different proposition. Um, it's not a spinoff. It's a facilitator. Um, I actually think if they do a couple of things differently at Singularity DAO, there's a lot of embedded value there. They, they, they clearly have a service. Now, the token is not necessary, obviously. There's no use for the token. And they may create some needs for the token, like token gate their services. But there's no, there's no actual use for the Singularity DAO token at all, period, full stop. And just saying that you have to have this many tokens to do this, that's not a use case. That's a forced use case. That's a uh, token in search of a need, token in search of a problem, right? Solution in search of a problem. So, but the Singularity DAO platform is awesome. I mean, it's awesome. Every one of, almost every one of us here is using it. It works good, yes. Sometimes they have little snafus. Sometimes they take six, week, six weeks off in December. Their, you know, their, their design team is, is arguably behind the ball and sometimes thought of as lazy. But they, what they deliver, their service is a good service. I use it, so it's a good service. So with Singularity DAO, I don't look at it as a Singularity Net spinoff. I look at it as a facilitator, a picks and shovels play that is integral. Also, they're launching assets. And at some point, they may make it where the Singularity DAO token receives benefits from all of those launches, which would be amazing. They don't do that yet. Um, we've had this discussion like 45 times. And every time uh, they, they nod at me, they placate me. I, I still think these guys, it doesn't matter. I, five years from now, if I'm a billionaire, these guys will still, these, these dudes will still look at me. And whenever I have an idea, they'll go, oh, okay, maybe, man, maybe. And they'll, it's, it, it boggles my mind. Whatever. Okay, anyway, that's neither here nor there. I like Singularity DAO. It's not, that's why I don't judge it among those other assets. Um, okay, if you got a number that is 18 or better, it's an investment. If you got a number that's between 15, 14, and 18, it's a trade in my mind. Now, you got to do what makes sense for you. But like, for instance, looking at this, I would say based on that, AGIX is an investment, Fetch is a trade, Ocean is an investment. I want everybody to have this in the back of your mind as we discuss this. So this, this partnership, this, this merger is not a tech merger, at least not yet. It is a token merger. So there's, there's many ways to look at this. Um, the things I don't like, I don't like that this was rushed. I don't like that this was done behind closed doors. Um, you can't be, you can't be open and, and decentralized and all about community and then do a secret deal among among a few people behind closed doors and then push it out to people like it's a foregone conclusion. Merging three tokens together, three very different companies with very different like well, cultures, huge cultural differences, not so much with Ocean. I think Ocean and AGIX is a great fit. I think Ocean and Fetch is a great fit. I think a Fetch and AGIX doesn't make any sense. I mean, at all. So clearly this was put together by, by money and marketing people. This was not, they can say whatever they want. Ben did not, did not orchestrate this. Ben was explained or sold this, in my opinion. Um, my guess is, um, there's more to the insolvency situation at fetch than we know. Um, there was a lot of, um, panic. Um, I think Fetch needed this more. And again, remember, I'm have I'm more heavily weighted to Fetch. So I have more Fetch than 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 AGIX. Okay. But my theory is there was a lot more to that. There was more smoke. Um there was more smoke there and probably some fire there. Anyway, we'll never know because they'll never tell us. Um, but this was all very to me, this was all very rushed. And when you do something like this. I think you put it out to the to the various communities and have discourse and let them talk about it. You're either decentralized or you're not. There's no middle. There's no, well, we're sometimes decentralized, but we do shit in secret. No, motherfucker. You're either decentralized or you're not. You're either, well, I don't want to go down that path. It's, But it's pretty clear. 
we are open and honest and decentralized for the betterment of mankind and beneficial, benevolent, helpful, hopeful, harmless AGI. Or you're not. Either one. They cannot both be true. If you do fucking deals in a, in a back alley and, and throw them to people in the way that this was done, it's not those things. So all of those things that you say are lit on fire by something like this. So then I go, oh, okay, well, I got to wonder what else is going on behind the scenes that I don't know about. I got to wonder what else they're going to do with my currency units that I'll find out about on a fucking Wednesday morning after some secret meetings in the open, decentralized, honest culture that we live in. Get off the, I mean, come on, man. So these are some of the things I'm not satisfied with. I'm not satisfied with the pricing, the ratios. I think you can't pick a random day. I think you say, okay, let's look at the tokens that were in supply and the price of the assets and their performance over an 18 month minimum, minimum, an 18 month stretch. All right. Minimum 18 months. They say we ran all these simulations. Bullshit. Bullshit. Where are they? Why don't you publish them? I did run the simulations on Claude 3 and fucking GPT-4. I, I did run them. I'd love to see what they did. Fucking zero. Nothing. So I'm not super excited about that. And and again, I none of this is, is angled towards any one individual. This was a group of people that pushed a certain thing and they sold it to the executives. This was not Ben's idea. I would I would guarantee I would I would bet everything this was sold to Ben. This was sold to these guys. So whatever. But it is what it is. We are where we are. So let's just keep let's talk through it. So these are the things that I don't like. Uh, I think this was rushed. I think this was the pricing. The ratio is not uh, a fair ratio. And even if the ratio is less of, uh, because right now it's 0.4333 or whatever, 0.3332 um, uh, to one. Like, so uh, basically, uh, you know, Fetch stays one for one with the new ASI token as they rebrand on the Cosmos ecosystem. As they rebrand the token, for every one fetch you have, you will then have one ASI token. Cool. It'll be on Coinbase because fetch is on Coinbase. It'll be on all the major exchanges that fetch is currently on because it's just a rebranding for fetch. Cool. One to one. The other ratios, the 0 0.433, 0 0.43, whatever, of Ocean and AGIX, uh, to me, to me, doesn't make sense. Um, so even if that number was less or more, I just think that rather than pick a random Monday to peg the price, which is super fucking stupid, okay? Because, you know, the whole world is not measured by what happened on fucking Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon is not a measure of the last two years or the last 18 months of the, of the incredible, like, burgeoning, like, magnitude-shifting changes that have happened since uh, ChatGPT launched. Right. And for and, and another thing, everybody owes Sam Altman a huge high five, like a huge high five without Sam Altman and what they did at OpenAI. All these tokens are sitting in the gutter still. So these guys are all riding on that high. So let's be let's at least go back to pre chat GPT by a few months and do that math. So go back to November 22 or 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 October of 22 run the math forward, you give me that conversion and whatever it is, I'm cool with it. I know what it is. I have, I, I did it. I'd like to see them do it. Okay. So those are my reservations. Um, okay. What do I think is good about this? Well, I think it's good to push these. I, uh, this is tricky. This is a token merger. So just on the math side, remember, we don't need we don't need to think anything more about it because right now this is just a token merger. Okay. So, uh, oh, the other thing I don't like about it is the staking rewards for fetch are going to come way down, 
which sucks because that's the best one and that was the one paying the best rewards. That's going to go away probably to something like three or four percent. That kind of sucks. Um, so that's another that's another con. OK, let's get to the pros. Let's get to the pros. Um, the pros are. Merging these together, which we're going to talk about passive indexation here in a little while, because it's a good it, this is a good segue. You're kind of tur you're turning this into an index. The AGIX token, which was mostly useless. The fetch token, which was mostly useless, except for speculation. And again, speculation is a value. It, that's a value proposition. I'm not discounting speculation. I'm just trying to be honest about it. Speculation coin, speculation coin, and some utility coin, uh, which is Ocean. So you're merging these together, meaning you're giving them all a mixture of speculation and utility. And by merging these groups together financially, because they're they're kind of all linked, right? Um, if you link them financially, you probably create inroads to start doing other inside deals and Hey, some sharing of technology and some sharing of equipment and things like this. And, you know, you, you, you can expand the, the reach and the breadth of these assets and they don't have to trail truly shitty products like render, which come on, that is a fucking joke, right? It is a pumpy fucking joke render is not ai render is render is using people's computers to render high density video and film footage guess what you don't need any of that anymore ai does all that that's why these assholes keep rebranding render is a pumpy fucking mess run by a bunch of hollywood douchebags and beeple unfortunately i love beeple he's awesome i have a beeple i support beeple um I think he's great. That's the only reason I was involved in Beeple, and I've and, and I am embarrassed <laughs> that I've made a lot of money from it, but not so embarrassed that I'm willing to give it back. Anyway, so by merging these companies together, you create a big token. Sorry, by merging these tokens together, you create one big token. One big token gets a lot of eyeballs. It's a lot easier to market one product with three marketing teams than three products with one marketing team, right? So that is good. Those are good things getting a lot of eyeballs, getting a token that could almost be a top 20 asset. That's a good thing. If they could get into a top 10 asset, that would be a huge thing. I mean, that would be a huge accomplishment. And that would be accretive for everyone, regardless of whatever the, the shift is. Um, a question you have to ask yourself, and this is somewhere in the middle, is do you think, well, let's do some yes or no's. Do you think, and I want you to list them again. I want you to list AGIX, Fetch, and Ocean. Tell me yes or no, who you think will achieve AGI, like artificial general intelligence. Do you think AGIX, uh, Singularity Net, will achieve it? Yes or no. Do you think Fetch will achieve it? Yes or no. Do you think Ocean will achieve it? Yes or no. Or, or, or has a chance to achieve it. Um, so, well, yeah, I mean, yes, no, no. Me, that's me too. Me too. This is where I'm at. Yes, no, no. The only of these teams that had a chance to achieve AGI is AGIX. Um, so, so there is that. Now, so Fetch and Ocean Benefit. Now, Ocean is a facilitator. Ocean is a great data play. It's kind of frustrating because I like Ocean as a separate asset because I love it as an investment. Um, and I and I don't think the discussion about big data has come yet. Now, on the other side of it, when the big data discussion comes and people start, you know, looking around and they see, oh, wait, Ocean product. Oh, wait, Ocean got uh, merged into um, the ASI asset. That probably brings a lot of people towards ASI. So that's accretive for AGIX and Fetch. Um, so the memeiness is accretive for everyone. Because you have a lot of exposure, you have an asset that's in the, hopefully in the top 20, maybe eventually in the top 10, whatever. It's easy for companies to say, oh, I'm going to invest. It's easy for newbies. Hey, what do I buy if I want to get AI exposure? Well, we now have a little kind of a weird AI index asset. Um, I wish they had hoovered up all of the other useless a, uh, AGI assets, the spinoffs that didn't need to be spun off, that don't need to exist. But, but you know... They didn't, who knows, maybe they will, uh, or maybe they'll just pump them like they're doing with Cogito. 
because that is some inorganic bullshit. You know what, though? I love it. Keep pumping it, baby. Every day, I take my allocation, I sell it. Take my allocation, I sell it. Take my allocation, I sell it. You want to buy me another Ferrari? More power to you. <laughs> Bravo, sketchy ass inorganic pump. <laughs> Whatever. So, I mean, and remember, Brandon had to remind me this. Do you want to be right or do you want to be rich? So, with that, my total thoughts are, is this deal overall good or overall bad? I'm going to give you my answer. I'd like to see your answer. Do you think, again, reducing the emotion, just keeping it about the math, keeping it about the five T's and about the pursuit of AGI, do you think this is a good deal or a bad deal? Your opinion. As I take another sip of my coffee. Let me ask, let me add this one caveat. Do you think it's a good deal as it now stands? But would you think it was a good deal if they redid the ratios based on an 18 month aggregate? So based on an 18 month aggregate, those of you that said it's not a good deal, would you, would you make it into, would you say it was a good deal? And I will give you my answer. Um, and I don't think it depends what blockchain, um, I think that it's going to run on a bunch of different, uh, chains. I think it will first run on cosmos because it, or it's, it is running on cosmos. Here's what I say. I say right now it's a bad deal right now. My vote is no, absolutely not. No fucking way. But the only thing it would take to sway me, the only thing it would take is if they did an 18 month ratio, if they went back and did the math for 18 months, if they did an 18 month uh, uh, research, like all these simulations that they say they did, which I think is bullshit, uh, but whatever, if they went back 18 months, they took the prices and the token counts into consideration and did whatever magic fucking Hollywood accounting they used, their voodoo math. They do the same voodoo math based on an 18 month time segment, I'm okay with it. I then think this is a good deal. I think this is a good deal with, again, with that caveat, I think this is a good deal. I think it's easier for people to invest. I think it will attract more dollars. It will attract more eyeballs. It will make those teams working together, even financially will force them to work together in other ways, which we can't even imagine what those outcomes might be. Look, there could be a lot of partnerships that Fetch has that they couldn't really, they couldn't really work with. They made these partnerships, but they couldn't deliver because they didn't have the kind of brain power. They do not have the brain power they have over at Singularity Net. We know that, but there's also some spammy, bullshitty people over at Singularity Net too. You got to take the uh, the good and the bad. So, but all in all, I think again, if they refixed those ratios, uh, I think this is a good deal, and I think it will end up being accretive accretive for everybody 20 years 120 months Ooh, you guys saw or no 200 uh 240 oh shit i think i predicted 120 oh does anybody remember what the predictions were so he got 240 months so neil do do point one do point eight five <laughs> he's gonna do 17 years on that even with good time um so yeah Listen, man, 20, God, 20 years is a long time, fellas. Like, I think Sam is a piece of shit and his, and his par parents are pieces of shit, but 20 years, man, that's 20 years of, of a person's life. I don't like him. Remember, I was calling him out. I, I put a picture of him in orange in 2021. Like, way before anybody else was shit-talking Sam, I was shit-talking Sam. But 20 years is a long time, right? Like, 20 years is a long time. Oh, can you imagine? God. Anyway, all right, let's get off to that. Um, so, uh, Ronald asks, apart from the ratio, do you think ASI will grow much faster than the three? It's going to get a lot more eyeballs. I think it has the potential 
to be to be everybody's index coin, everybody's token they go to. Like, oh, if you want AI, you've got to get ASI, ASI, ASI. I mean, right? T to me, this is what it seems like. Um, um, it's already going to be on Coinbase and Kraken. Remember, Fetch is rebranding. Fetch is rebranding. So, so their token is already on those exchanges. So this will be on those exchanges. And way you can think about it is Fetch is vacuuming up all of the tokens from Ocean Protocol and AGIX and issuing the new Fetch token. So ASI is the new Fetch. That's kind of an easy way to look at it. Um, would the merge benefit HyperCycle? Um, Marketing-wise, probably. Yeah. Eyeballs, more eyeballs. Um, is... This is how you know that these executives don't know what they're talking about. When they're like, oh, it's going to run on HyperCycle. No, it's not going to run on HyperCycle. That's some old stupid shit you say when you don't understand how tech works. HyperCycle can wrap any token and send it. Okay? They can wrap. The, the HyperCycle native token can do all sorts of really cool things. And one of them is it can wrap assets. Any asset, Bitcoin or otherwise. Any asset can be wrapped by the native token and pushed out at light speed. It's pretty badass. Um, but it's a ledgerless system. So, you know, the, now, would, would, hyper, would these companies benefit from HyperCycle doing the compute between AI machines? Absolutely. So, so yes, I think this is indirectly good for the entire panoply of AGIX, associated assets. Hypercycle is a little different because Hypercycle is a protocol that puts it in a different category. Um, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. I also think Twin is worth more now than it was worth before this announcement. Because let's face it, this will go through. This vote will happen and it will be a yes because of the, of the condensation of tokens in the wallets. They have enough people just amongst themselves to bully this through. And if you think you're going to get a fair vote, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, do you like this as an investment? Of course, because I still like these three assets individually. Um, well, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. As an investment to reach, say, 10x of where it's at? I don't know about that. Now, if they got to AGI before big governments, things like that, of, of course, it's an infinity asset. Whoever gets to AGI first, everybody else loses. It's like whoever achieves AGI within a couple of hours or a couple of days, no one can catch up. You understand how, how vitally important this is? So we need Ben to win. This is the thing. Regardless of all the bullshit, regardless of all the backdoor dealings and all the skullduggery, which there is a lot of, and all of the we're bankrupt, we're not, we're merging, we're not, hey, this is a great deal. There's a bunch of smoke and mirror peddlers fucking, you know, negotiating this deal while smoking cigarettes and drinking a bunch of like expensive alcohol on our dime. Regardless of all that bullshit, we need Ben to win. On any other version, uh, any of these companies, private companies, getting to AGI and eventually super intelligence first is not a good outcome for humanity. At, at least it's not a clearly good outcome. Um, does this impact true AGI? Yes, and I think it's accretive. I think this is really good for true AGI. True AGI, um, well, listen, they're the backbone of OpenCog Hyperon and, and, and yes, I guess yes. I think I think true AGI is worth 50% more than it was yesterday. And I think twin is worth a 2x of what it was worth Monday. Um, I think this is very good for twin and very good for true AGI. Full disclosure, I own a shit box of both of those. <laughs> but I'm locked up. I'm locked up, everyone. So don't 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 worry. I'm locked up. Uh, okay. Um, yes, I mean, um, 
Yes, that's absolutely right. We can, we can't know what's in Ben's mind because Ben is much more intelligent. He is. He's smarter than everybody here, me included, by by a, by a factor of ten, <laughs> by a, by a magnitude. Um, so for us to assume what he's thinking um, is silly. Uh, I'm just putting the pieces together from what I've seen and what I've heard, and you'd be surprised how many people I know that have messaged me with all sorts of very in interesting information. Uh, you would be surprised. Okay. Um, update from twin tomorrow. There's an announcement for twin. Uh, and it's, it's a big one. They are going to announce all sorts of cool things tomorrow. So I would stay, uh, pay attention to their, to their, uh, telegram. Okay. Um, I want to talk a minute. Um, about the passive indexation effect. I think it merits discussion. Let's, let's, let's kind of close out with some passive indexation discussion. Uh, so without further adieu. Hello. You're late. You're bad at math, but I'm giving you an A plus in confidence. Just doing what I got to do. Extra credit. Okay. So um, let us spend a minute. Um, I want to just really briefly talk about passive indexation because what's happening here is we're taking three kind of competitive assets, quasi-competitive assets, definitely Fetch and AGIX. We're merging them together, at least from a financial perspective. We're merging the Ocean Protocol in there and their token ecosystem, whatever. So it's it's all becoming one big glob. Great. This is kind of an indexed, this is kind of an index, an, an, an ASI or an AGI index uh, that we're creating. It's, it's kind of a fund. So we need to talk about the passive indexation effect. Um, and for those of you that get interested in this kind of stuff, go listen to Mike Green talk about passive indexation. Okay. It's, it's vitally important, not so much in crypto, but it's vitally important to understanding, um, regular equity markets and, and to an extent bond markets, but mostly ec the equity space. Anyway, we're going to delve over the next probably five minutes, we're going to delve into a financial contract that uh, kind of a kind of a concept that is really kind of sleuthy and intriguing. And that is, uh, and it's not just for investors, but anyone who manages projects, who makes decisions about where to allocate resources. The concept is um, referred to colloquially as the passive indexation effect. And to understand it, you want to start with the very basics of what an index is in the financial world. An index. And again, this is just very like simple, high level. Um, it is a method of tracking the performance of a group of assets, right? Think of it like a basket. In the stock market, the basket would contain various stocks from different companies that may or may not be related in one or many ways. So the idea is that by looking at the basket as a whole, you can get a general sense of how well or poorly the market is doing. You could have uh, a, data ba uh, a data basket, right? Which might have had ocean and Filecoin and Arweave and Coin and StoreJ, like you could see a data basket, right? So you could have a basket or an index, right? And that just gives you an idea of the, of the total kind of the, the, the pulse of the market at any one moment by looking at the performance of all those assets on the aggregate. So let's take this concept and apply it to projects or small ventures, which these three projects are all kind of small ventures, if we're being honest. So imagine we combine several small or similar projects into one group or index. Maybe we call it ASI. Um, the combination is done passively, meaning we're not selecting each project based on its individual merits, but rather grouping them to create a diversified token, right? You might wonder, why would anyone do this? And the answer lies, in, there's a variety of reasons. Marketing uh, is a big one. Um, ease of entry for the new investor, but it's a risk reward balance at the end of the day. Remember, reduce it to math, reduce it to game theory. It is a risk reward balance. And so by spreading resources across a bunch of different projects, you reduce the impact of any single project failing, like say, fetch. Uh, <laughs> it's the principle of not putting all your eggs in one basket, but we're kind of putting all our eggs in one basket. <laughs> So the diversification provides a bit of a safety net. Uh, it ensures that the failure of one project doesn't spell disaster from the entire portfolio. There is a flip side to that, obviously. So when, when you combine projects into an index, the extraordinary success of any single project is then 
immediately diluted because its performance is just a part of the overall group's performance. If you thought that Fetch's partnerships were amazing, that, that becomes muted because it becomes it, it, it the benefit is to the entire blob. If you thought Singularity Net was going to hit um, AGI first and then that, that asset was going to carry you to some kind of wealth in Nirvana, that's probably um, a different argument now. Uh, again, because it's part uh, it's part of the overall group performance. So, so while we mitigate the risk of failure, we do kind of cap the potential rewards from high performers. However, in the in the search and pursuit for artificial general intelligence, and then whatever super intelligence looks like, um, it's winner take all. So I think it's still a zero sum game. And this, if the cooperation is good, this creates a better likelihood of that index that group achieving something that looks like agi because they just have more firepower again assuming that there's not a lot more detriment by this partnership than we know okay uh carrying on so this brings us to the effect of the future growth of these individual projects so again this is a token merger not a comp they're not the companies are not merging that's why this is a little sticky this isn't a typical m e deal this is a token merger, which is, again, it's a, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more dubious. But being part of a larger index can offer stability. It can offer more resources than a project might have had on its own. We talked about this kind of the sharing of resources, the sharing of partnerships. It also might mean that the project loses some of its individual identity, and that the decisions made. Um, are for the good of the index as a whole, but not necessarily for each individual product or project, right? So that's something to consider. Um, one of the potential drawbacks of a passive indexation effect is its impact on innovation. If the success of you know, the individual projects isn't as visible, then the motivation for them to push boundaries and innovate could be lessened. Although I don't think that's a problem with these teams, but if I look at the amount of of, of give a shit, it seems like the people at a, at Singularity Net give more shits than the people at Fetch that were partying and boozing and having a good old time and got caught, you know, got caught bankrupt. They, they woke up bankrupt one day, right? Like, how do you go bankrupt? Slowly and then all of a sudden. But you know what? That's also how you get rich. Slowly and then all of a sudden. I probably, well, I'm not going to go into it, but I spent a lot of years of my life trying to get to a million and then not too many years getting to 10 million and not too many years getting to 50 million. It's like, it happens quick. It Again, you just like stick with the basics, right? Be, be brilliant at the basics, right? So this is more of that. So the security of being part of a large index can paradoxically lead to a bit of complacency. I don't think that's the case with these teams. Um, and actually, I don't really care what Fetch does. If this gives AGIX, if, if this gives the Singularity Net team more firepower and they can leverage Ocean Protocol, fine. Still probably good, right? Like, like it's, it's I think, net good. Anyway, so it's true that, the, that this indexation method allows for the pursuit of more projects since the risk is now distributed and there's a bigger war chest. Um, this can lead to a greater overall output, even if the individual projects don't reach their own maximum or maximal potential, right? So even if Fetch is a dog, doesn't matter. If AGIX is a dog, but Fetch kicks ass, doesn't matter. It's still going to pull the entire mass forward. Um, we'll see. Uh, I hope that the partnership becomes... The actual merger, I guess, I hope it becomes a merger of these companies to an extent. Um, if if Singularity Net can leverage the partnerships that have been developed over at, at Fetch, that'd be worth it. If all they do is strip mine partnerships, we all we, we would all do great. So to sum all this up, the decision to combine these projects into an index, this ASI kind of index asset, involves... Uh, a strategic trade-off between reducing risk and maximizing the potential rewards. It requires, uh, I think it requires all of us to carefully consider what we value more. Do you value the safety and the stability provided by this new diversification or the high potential growth of the individual projects? 
Before this, I would have said no effing way uh, to Fetch and AGIX being together. But um, I, I think that that on the aggregate, if they can figure out this pricing, this ratio, I think this is net, net good. Uh, if they price it based on an 18 month section, not based on, you know, Monday. Anyway, so whether it's in finance uh, or in the AI space, um, you're involving risk and the principles of risk management of strategic planning and diversification are crucial in guiding these decisions. Um, I hope this kind of helps as you guys just work your way through this. Um, and I, I do urge you to be not emotional, not emotional about this stuff. You just got to reduce it to math and reduce it to what we know. Um, and again, the, it's not the CEO of the, this is a token merger, Steve, not a company merger. The companies are not merging. That's not what this is. This is a financial token merger. Uh, this is, it's going to be very interesting how this plays out. Um, so there you go. That's all I have to say about that. Um, okay. So, uh, stay in school. Don't do drugs. Oh, real quick. One thing. There was a guy that told, he complained to me that he was keep one. He was keeping all of his savings in Cogito. And how dare I say that I didn't like it because he sold Cogito and then Cogito went up and he, he clearly blames me. Buddy, I need you to go and read the 25 cognitive biases because about 16 of them are in your statements. Do not get your financial advice from some dick bag that you hear on YouTube. Are you insane? Like, come on, man. You can't, you can't ride with me and be like, oh, yeah, man, it's awesome. Oh, but then that one time that other token went up after the, and then be like, it's bullshit. This is why I don't give financial advice and I fired all my fucking clients. I don't do that. I tell you what I do. You got to do you. Everybody here has to make their own decisions and take responsibility for them. You need to take responsibility. Do you really want to get to the end of the road and find success and look back and say, oh, it was because of some fucking hack on YouTube? Take responsibility for everything you do, the good and the bad. When you buy, listen, Cogito was my worst investment, worse than flow. It was my worst investment. Some dudes are pumping it. I don't care. It's now not my worst investment. I'm selling it as fast as I get it because it's because it's bogus. But I'm not hating. But I'm still never going to tell people that I'm recommending an asset that I think is shitty. If you have a shitty team and a shitty business proposition and your tokenomics are bullshit and your team has no experience in crypto, and you're like, if you go through the five T's and you get a negative 40, I'm selling your shit, bro. Period. Whatever happens with the price is a machination of the future. No one knows what's ever going to happen with the price of an asset. None of us. All these tokens could shit the bed or do a 10x tomorrow, but I'm never going to invest in something. Listen, Solana has done amazing with a piece of shit team a piece of shit blockchain and, and more problems than you can imagine. This thing shuts down every two weeks. It doesn't matter. The price is not the story. There's, there's, there's just two separate things. They're just two separate things, man. So anyway, like take responsibility for your shit. I, listen, I took responsibility for my stuff. I've been rich and I've been poor. It is what it is, man, but at least own it. Because otherwise, you're going to be blaming everybody else for everything that doesn't work out in your life forever. And that's the way to live your life. You want to own it because also when you succeed, you want to own that too. You want to own the good. You, you can't own the wins if you don't own the losses, bro. Hey, listen, man. I gave a million dollars to an escrow agent who got, who got hacked. Not hacked. He got swindled. It is what it is. If that hadn't happened... We wouldn't have built Node Market. Think about that. We built it because we got screwed and we thought, well, shit. Well, we didn't. I got screwed. I thought, man, we got to fix this. And Brandon said, bro, 
bro, bro, bro, bro. We can get the devs together and we can build the shit out of this. And then we looked around and we said, hey, how come you can't buy all the singularity net assets in one place? How come you got to go all over the place? Bro, 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 we can fix this. Hey, how come I have to trust third parties with OTC transactions? Bro, 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 we can fix this. So we fucking fixed it. That's it. Anyway, uh, stay in school. Don't do drugs. Don't do anything. My poor and solvent drunk, strung on meth grandmother wouldn't do. Um, if you like the content, great. Please share it with your with and amongst your friends. If you don't like the content, fucking cancel, bro. We don't need your hundred bucks. It fucking rocks. I'm out.